this is another one of those little handy videos. That was a blues scale. You like that? You're going to hear them a whole lot like at the end of a song. I um, was blind, but now I see. scale well it's kind of a take off of a minor scale the notes are F A flat B flat B natural C E flat and F so you can play these several different ways put that thumb under on B natural one two three one two three one two if I got that thumb going under on B I know F depending on how high you want to go. Now coming down, I like to kind of mess with it a little bit. Going up, I usually do it pretty straightforward. But coming down, I come down, up, just a little bit, down. Do it slowly. So what I'm doing is one whole scale, and then right where my hand is, just go back up those four notes, the last four notes, and then back down. Up four, back down. So I'm kind of going down eight, up four, down eight, up four, down eight, up four in general. But now I see That's the blues scale. Now, if you're going to learn a blues scale, don't try to play it that fast. Do it really slow until you can build up some speed. One thing you don't want for sure with any scale is a horse galloping. Make sure you get it even, even if it's slower. Okay, so don't think you're going to sit down and just do it. You've got to work at it. you got to got to practice it. You've heard practice makes perfect. Well, it really does. That's blues scale. What if we interject a whole tone scale? Something that not a lot of people use, so that would kind of set you apart from everybody else. I'm sticking with Amazing Grace because everybody knows it. Watch this. Amazing. A whole tone scale. Just enough different that you set up and take notice. So what in the world is that? I'm starting with an F augmented. See that C sharp is not, a, normally it's a C, so it's a C sharp. I've augmented the F chord. F A C sharp. Amazing Grace. Anytime you hit an augmented chord, and here's the way they work. Usually an augmented chord, in this case particularly, will take you from one to four. So when you know you're going from one to four in any song, you can throw in an augmented chord. And if you got any time at all while you're sitting on that augmented chord, you can throw in a whole tone scale. Kind of cool, isn't it? How sweet the sound. Watch this. That saved a wretch like me. Another augmented chord. How about that? That's something really different. Save the wretch like me. I'm playing a G sus and then C augmented. Really different. So the C augmented, you're getting ready to go from five to one. Which is C augmented, C E G sharp. And so the scale, the whole tone scale that goes with it. It's three black notes, three white notes. G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D, E. Probably the easiest one to play. G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D, E. Very simple. I once was lost. That is a whole tone scale, something very unique. If you want to learn whole tone scales, 
take it from the beginning and just do it very slowly, practice it. And you're not going to learn all these at once. I'm going to, this whole video is about scales, but you're not going to learn all of them. Just pick one and go for it and learn how to use it in a song, in a practical application. And then pick the next one. I mentioned last time in the last video, seventh scales, and I had several emails from people telling me I need to slow down a little bit. And so I'm going to try to do that. Amazing. A seventh scale. I'm in F chord, so the left hand is kind of just chopping away on an F seventh. I have C, E flat, F, and A. The right hand, C, D, E flat, thumb under F, G, A, B flat, and then C, same thing again, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. Remember to keep your fourth finger on B flat, your third finger always on E flat, and you'll be okay. Again, nice and slow. However slow you need to make it to make it steady. Amazing. And of course, you need to figure out where you're going to stop. You stay within the time, and I'm going to a B flat chord, so I needed to stop on some note that's in B flat chord. And you get to the middle of the song. I once was lost. So you can come down, you can go up, you can do it any way you want to. It's just when you're on an F seventh. Going to B-flat, you can use an F7 scale. And, of course, I'm in the key of F. It works for any key, but this is just where I am right now. Let me throw in another little monkey wrench. That is a 7th scale for a dominant 7th chord. Watch this. I'm going to use a C minor chord that saved a wrench like me. On the second half of the song, instead of going to F, I once. And when I go to that C minor, which is a one minor, which is a five minor, I'm sorry, I'm in the key of F, so I'm on a C minor, five minor. I can use that same scale with my left hand in E flat or C minor, seventh, whichever you prefer. Okay, I'm playing E flat because that's the top part, the top three notes of a C minor seven. exactly the same scale. That's what I'm getting at. C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat. I want. Okay, now let me put it on context. I've kind of lost track of the song, but that same scale works as an F dominant seventh scale or a C minor seventh scale, just depending on what chord that you're holding or singing or whatever's going on at that point of the song. Saved a wretch like me. Do them both right back. I was lost. You see how the left hand is what changed? Same scale going up and the same scale coming down, but the left hand changes. I was. But now I. So that's seventh scale. Dominant seventh, minor seventh. It's going to work the same way. I can also, I'm just going to do about three more scales, so you stay with me. This is just kind of a fun little exercise on scales. Everybody thinks they're boring, basic things. Nah, scales can be used for so many different things, and they're not boring at all, as you can tell. What if I think about my left hand a minute and play the Amazing Grace and the whole entire F scale with my left hand? Watch this. Amazing. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. Say, wretch like me. And then on the second half, I'm going to play a C minor scale. Watch this. I once I'm just playing bass notes in the scale to keep from having to sit there on the same note for measure after measure. Play the scale. Sometimes it'll fit, sometimes it won't. But most of the time, if you think it through, you can make it work. Now, bass players know this. They do it all the time to keep them playing the same note. Keyboarders can think that way, too. Just kind of liven your stuff up. Use a scale every once in a while, major, minor, whatever fits. It's rather interesting. I'm going to talk to you just a moment about chromatic scales. Probably one of the most logical choices, because a chromatic scale is every half step skipping nothing. 
So you can put them almost anywhere you want to. Amazing. How sweet the sound. Let's do it backwards now. Chromatic scale. I, I hear you. You want the fingering. Here it comes. Uh, I'm going to start on the E flat. And you, again, it depends on what chord you're in as to where you start and to, as to where you stop. If I start on E flat, watch this. I've got the third finger on E flat. Three, one, three. Anytime you get to the two white notes, you want two, one. And when you're black notes, it's three, one, three, one, three, two, one. Because there's two white notes together. Three, one, three, two, one. Three, one, three, one, three, two, one. Three, one, three, two, one. Three, one, three, one, three, two, one. Okay? And it's very simple. Don't try to do it fast. Unless you want to. Amazing grace. And you see how I caught that F chord in there? You gotta gotta know where you're going. Amazing. Or you can make it long. Amazing. B flat because that's where the chord goes, the next part of the song. Chromatic scale. You can use them anywhere, pretty much. Just make sure you know where you're starting, make sure you know where you're ending. And I need to say right now, you'd never play a song with this many scales in it. I'm overdoing it on purpose just to get my point across. But there's one more scale I gotta drop on you. Th this is just so cool. Amazing. chromatic scale one of my very favorites if you have any of my cds i know you've probably heard that not on every song but probably a good percentage of them i just really enjoy that it's so unique Amazing. what's that you want fingering i understand i'm starting on c e flat b d and just half steps now, if I was on a C chord, I'd start with C, E. All right, break it down. C, E flat. So I'm playing two, three, the fingering. One, three, two, four, one. That's one, four, two, four, one, three, two, four, one, three. One, three, two, four, one, three. Almost the kind of thing where you just kind of, kind of work it out whatever is most comfortable for you. I doubt that I do it exactly the same way every time. Amazing. Especially nice at the end of the song was blind. But now I'm going to do it again. C, verse three. Just a bass note, but you get the idea. But now I see. The sound that saved a wretch like me. Blue scale. Seventh scale was lost. Seventh scale, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. There you have it. A whole bunch of scales. Scales are not boring. If you feel like you could use some music theory, I happen to have a course available. There's a link below this video. Check it out. It teaches you all about scales and what they do and how to make them and why you make them and how they function and all that kind of thing. It just might be something that you would enjoy. Until next time, I hope this video comes in handy.